Hey everybody, my name is Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching, Ask Dane. Um, today is a fun show on a, for a lot of reasons, but um, I want to get you up to speed on a bunch of other stuff before we get started. For those of you who are brand new to the show, um, you'll know that um, this is very quick. It's only 30 minutes every week. It's for free, thanks to the folks at ShoeQ. They provide this for you. But what we want to do is address kind of your own felt need questions right now. The, the big, big picture goal is to help you with your your photo world, whatever that looks like, and to help move it forward in your creativity, and your business, whatever it is. Uh, but we want to address your questions, but really it's just a conversation. Uh, it's between me, my guest, and you, and we really want to invite you to, to take advantage of that. Um, I do have some quick announcements that I want to make sure everybody knows about. Um, for those of you, um, actually it's funny, if you hear typing in the background, just so you know, it's our special guest who's very prolific and can pull off a lot in one small space. So, so that's, uh, don't, don't worry about it. Um, but I have this list of stuff that I want to make sure I address to make sure you know what's up. And it's right here. Um, uh, first of all, last week we had Julia Woods on the show. She talked a lot about PPA's uh, studio management um, kind of support uh, and, and uh, for, uh, services that they provide for folks. And they are coming to uh, a couple California dates this fall. And I want to make sure that you know that if you go on the on the Ask Dane website and click to the previous couple posts, you'll see a link there that'll get you a discount on the SMS uh, workshop if you want to take advantage of that later this summer. I know I'm going to be there. I hope you'll join in. Secondly, uh, there are some Fast Track Roadshow 2 workshops coming out. They'll probably be announced next week, so I wanted to give you a heads up on that. Also, today was the day that Escalate Live, the video on demand, started uh, delivering. Actually, started last night. And it's still rolling out uh, today and all week. As we get more and more videos up, we're going to start uploading them right away. And you'll have a chance to uh, both download them uh, to take with you and also to watch streaming online whenever you want if you signed up for that. And if you want to ch check that out more uh, to see if you want to get the video on demand for Escalate Live, just go to escalatelive.com forward slash VOD. Uh, I also want to let you know we have a bunch of great shows lined up. Uh, next week, uh, sorry, yeah, next week is David Duchemin, the author of Vision Mongers. The week after that, we have Tamara Lackey. Week after that, we have Jerry Guionis. Week after that, we have Jester Rocks. And I just confirmed a minute ago that the week after that, we have uh, John Michael Cooper from Las Vegas. So I'm really thrilled about our lineup. But today, in particular, I'm excited because uh, I have a, uh, an old friend, a guy named Amit Gupta, um, who is the founder of Photo Jojo and a whole bunch of other things. But um, I want to bring him on now, if I can just figure out got the right things to click. And I want to welcome you, Amit. Hey. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, there is a little bit of a time delay. It's a little bit like we're on CNN and one of us is in a foreign country, uh, but we can live with it. Um, for those of you who don't know, Amit has done a ton of work in a lot of different areas. Um, and I'll let him speak for himself, but just because he won't brag on himself too much, he's he's understated guy. Um, he's uh, the founder of uh, Work at Jelly. If you've ever seen uh, these kind of worldwide phenomenon featured all over the place, these uh, co-working spaces, uh, that, that was his brainchild. He also uh, started the Photo Jojo website, which I think has something somewhere close to like a half million people signed up for their newsletter. Um, let's just go with 10 billion, I mean, to really exaggerate the point. Um, it's so almost there's a lot of number. folks yeah, who are uh, clearly interested. In <laughs> That's great. Uh, and he's also written a book recently. I'll talk about this more later. But uh, Photo Jojo, Insanely Great Photo Projects in DIY Ideas. If you want to check out the book in person, just go to uh, j.mp forward slash Amit is cool, A-M-I-T-I-S-C-O-O-L, and you can see the link there. Um, but Amit, I, I just want to, um, first of all, just welcome you and let you know that today you're kind of the poster child for the do-it-yourself world. And I wanted to ask you some specific questions about your experience, kind of what you as you've been a photo enthusiast for a long time and been around a lot of photo, photo enthusiasts, um, what's your impression right now of kind of the state of do-it-yourself culture and just photo enthusiasm of, as you've seen it around the world? How are, what's, how are things going? Sure. Um, well, I think we're in a really interesting time. And I think that uh, there's a lot of stuff that's converging for us right now in terms of digital and, and computation and photography that's made stuff possible that wasn't even a dream uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, things like being able to take photos with this that are nearly as good as what you could take with a 35 millimeter camera 10 years ago. Um, 
is is kind of amazing and um it's definitely led to a ton of experimentation and a ton of people really getting creative with photography and doing stuff that uh, wasn't possible or just wasn't um, rational maybe 20 years ago, taking a picture of everything you eat every day or taking a photo every day for a year just because you want to, not because you're a photographer, not because you you know do this for a living, just because you feel like it. Um, and I think that's led to a lot of a lot of interesting stuff. And that's kind of where we focus, uh, unearthing a lot of the a lot of the more interesting nuggets of people living with photography instead of uh, necessarily living off of photography. Now that's a really fascinating distinction because on the one hand you have this idea of um, both the this the people who are living like treating photography as an end result versus people who just love photography and they can do a lot more with it because of the tools that are available. But for a lot of the pros that I know, it wasn't always just about how can I you know, make money with it. It, w it started off as a passion and they can caught the dream oh, yeah, of sure. I want to go make money with this passion so I can spend more time doing it. And as you mm -hmm. think about that, as you're talking to folks who maybe are in that seat of the enthusiast who is thinking maybe I want to do this for a living now that I can, I have access to something that I didn't feel like I did before. What advice do you give those folks? Um, oh, I'm sorry, could you just repeat the last part again and you just dropped out? Sure. If you are giving advice to folks um, who say that, let's say they're enthusiasts, they just have a passion for photography, what yeah. advice would you give them as they're getting started if they, if they want to transition and try to become a professional, not just an enthusiast? Well, there's this book written by this guy. Uh, I think his name is Dane. I'm not sure what his last <laughs> name is. I think it's Dane Come Sanders. Uh, it's it's definitely worth That's... checking out. Um, I think that I think it's, it's 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 care it's uh, <laughs> it's um, I think it's really easy to turn a passion into your work and forget about why it was a passion in the first place. Um, I think a lot of people fall into that trap, and it happens really slowly. I think uh, when you start getting serious about something, no matter how much you loved it in the first place, it becomes work. And once it becomes work, um, at some point, it becomes work that is unpleasant. So I think it's super important that if you start out in a business that really spurs out of your passion. Uh, and I'm speaking from personal experience here because photography was a, a personal passion that turned into a business for me, but it started out very much as a hobby. It started out, uh, all the stuff we do with Photojudge started out as just hobby and fun stuff. Um, I think it's just super important to take a break and remember why you're doing this in the first place. Make sure that you're taking the time to actually enjoy photography. Um, and I think that that's definitely something that I should be doing more of. I think that uh, it's it's something that I uh, personally fall into the trap of, um, you know, just working a lot on it instead of enjoying it. Um, so if I can counsel people in doing what I say instead of doing what I do, I'd say take a break and, and make sure you're still having uh, the fun parts of photography in your life. Um, and really uh, talking to some of the pros that have... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. That's fine. Uh, t talking to some of the pros that are on our list, um, it's um, I think photo judge has given them that refreshing kind of uh, flashback to what was really exciting about photography when they were starting or what was really uh, fun and creative. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm like really psyched that we get to be that for a lot of people because um, once it does become a business, it's, it's easy to forget why you started it and if, if you can... Uh, do fun projects or do interesting things or just goof off with photography. It's a great way to, to remind yourself why you got in it. You know, it, you mentioned a couple times that um, photography itself has, there's so many leaps that have happened in the last, uh, you know, five, ten years about what's kind of possible. And it seems like you've built a career on that. I mean, looking at even, uh, you know, the jelly idea. Uh, I don't know if you ever monetize that or maybe there's no way to do it, but um, that was because it became possible that people could co-work when before they couldn't. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to workatjelly.com or, or Google Jelly because you won't find Jam as the first hit. You'll see Work at Jelly is the first hit. Uh, it's an amazing phenomenon of people just kind of co-oping their time and their space uh, to get a lot of collaborative work done. Um, 
So mm -hmm. that became a, 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 an exciting possibility that turned into something cool for you as a business. And then Photo Jojo, the same kind of thing. What, what tangibly do you actually do to not just make it a job for you? Like how, I know you say don't, you want to practice what you preach, but tangibly, yeah. what do you actually do to remind yourself in your business to get back to what's, what's important? Uh, I mean, some of the things that I've been doing more recently have uh, actually been around design. I think the two of the passions in my life that have followed me are, are photography and design, and the one that I've probably neglected more uh, in past years has been um, has been the design portion. So I'm trying to set aside a day a week to uh, work from home and just do design projects. It doesn't always work out exactly that way, but I think that something like that, having kind of a fixed block of time where you're out shooting or you're out just goofing with your camera and you're you're forcing yourself not to, maybe you don't even use any of those shots, maybe you don't even download any of those shots or, or develop any of that film. It's just about taking the photographs and having fun with the camera uh, with no goal in mind. I think stuff like that is super fun. Um, there's a, we did a, these series of events called Photo Safaris, which took a hundred photographers through some uh, fun area of San Francisco or Brooklyn or Las Vegas um, just for the fun of it. So stuff like that. Um, there's all sorts of photo events um, all over the world. Um, if, you, if you look on, um, there's a couple of photo walks websites, there's a bunch of groups on Meetup, um, all over the web really. You can find fellow photographers who are in this for the love of it. And I think reconnecting with others who are in it for the love of it is probably the number one way to, to rekindle your own love. I agree. So, okay, so let's switch gears just for a second because I'm, a, I'm with you on the affections of photography, but I'm also curious about um, the implications of this kind of era that we're in. I don't think it's the do-it-yourselves problem, the do-it-yourselvers problem, or the pros problem, but for whatever reason, as the internet has emerged and digital, digital revolution has turned into the establishment, it seems like um, the, because there's kind of no rules for the enthusiast, they, go, they can just kind of have passion unleashed with their photography, and then you have these pros who are, who are maybe they went to photo school or journalism school, and they're uh, kind of trying to make a buck and it just seems like papers are going away because you don't need papers anymore and uh, the usual in fact there was actually an article in the New York Times that you probably read uh, that talked about the eroding path and they juxtaposed two photographers one was this pro journalist over at the New York Times with this mother of six or something who made money off of her point shoot camera through Flickr and Getty images and they were talking about the implications of the, the do-it-yourself no rule person and the pro so I'm curious, in addition mm -hmm. to kind of looking to, for ways to stay in love with the craft, um, what are your thoughts on the implications on DIY culture for the pros? Like, do you really think that there's uh, viability still in professional photography, or do you think that uh, it's just kind of a, a, a predetermined reality that uh, pro photography is probably going to go the way of, of the dinosaur? Uh, people are always going to need great photographs. Um, I think that the mistake uh, pro photographers sometimes make and the mistake that a lot of professionals in general make inside photography or otherwise is that they're selling the product. They're selling those photographs. They're not selling themselves. Um, because it's it's not the case that you're selling photographs. You're selling uh, reliability, you're selling fun, you're selling your personality, right. you're selling your ability to make people smile or to get uh, in front of people when they're about to do something interesting. Uh, you're selling a lot of soft skills which are really difficult to market often. Um, so people fall back on marketing uh, on price yeah. or, or selling on price. But um, that's, that's not what it's about. Anyone can take great pictures. I mean, that's just the honest truth of it. And that was always the case. It's just, it used to be a lot more expensive to take great pictures. And now uh, anyone can get a, a really great camera for not very much money. And um, if they practice at it, they're, they're going to take really great pictures. And like I said, with, as with any other profession where the cost of entering has gone down over time, uh, whether you're looking at medicine or, or whatever, um, the public usually can't judge how good the product is, right? I can't look at Dane and say how good a photographer you are. I can't look at my pediatrician and say how good he is at um, taking care of my kid. Like, who knows? Uh, but what I can tell is 
You know, right. is he right. fun to be around? Is he explaining stuff well? Is he uh, giving me confidence that he actually cares about me? And if he is, then he's probably a good doctor. And the same is true of a photographer. So I think that that's what it's about. I think photographers have to improve their bedside manner and sell on their bedside manner um, because it's not about the gear and mm -hmm. so not about the photographs anymore. Now, are there pros that you pay attention to, or is that kind of not on your radar as much? Uh, I wish it were more on my radar, but no, no, it's not. I think that there's uh, pros that um, kind of intersect in the spaces that we talk about and pay attention to that are doing interesting work outside of their professional work, perhaps, that we probably do have on our radar, but um, not, not in general pros, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to talk a little bit about your book uh, because as I, I got this a while back and I was really impressed with it and in particular I was impressed with the r diversity of the projects that you have in this book because when you talked earlier about looking for ways to kind of rekindle the passion or keep the passion going, it seems like any of these projects uh, just a time out from doing accounts receivable and payable and you know making sure the prints show up on time as a professional photographer just to do one of these projects a week would feel like a great um, a great effort and I know you and I met um, way back when because I saw uh, you do a video thing on photo blocks and I, I, there's a couple in here that just really stuck out to me that I, I think are really cool um, I know with Father's Day coming there's a lot of folks interested in just going to your site if they don't want to actually do the project you've actually done it for a lot of these folks but how in the world did you come up with things like the bottle cap uh, um, tripod like are these your inventions sure or or the, uh, the photo uh, lampshade or how, where did these all come from or the doggy can uh, yes yeah, so, my favorites <laughs> so so I guess first uh, I want to highly encourage everyone to take your idea and do one of these a day buy this book go and do a project a day um, I think you'll be a better person for it um, the ideas. I think uh, a lot of credit goes to my co-author uh, Kelly Jensen. She and I uh, worked on this book together and the ideas came from our brainstorming and from reader submissions. They came from us uh, just browsing around and looking for ideas, stuff we've done in the newsletter. Uh, in, our, in our about page on the website we tell, uh, we say that we uh, dig through our friends closets and trash cans and just are always rummaging for interesting ideas all around the internet, anywhere we can find them. Uh, and that really is true. Um, so the dog on that cover is Kelly's dog Molly. She's adorable. Uh, we always wanted to do a dog's eye cam, and uh, we finally got around to doing it with this book. And it it's amazing video. Uh, it's more crotches and you know just in, inside inner thighs than you you'll ever see in your life. But that's really what <laughs> Molly cares about in life. And and had we not done that doggy cam, we wouldn't have known that Molly's just on a mission to find. The, the crotches, all the most interesting crotches in the world. And now we know what she cares about. Um, so that that was great. Um, the stuff like the bottle cap I tripod. Think, I think it'd be um, really interesting to... Uh, I, yes. I think it'd be really interesting to find out um, if we put a camera on everybody's head and just took the tape and figured out what they really cared about, it'd be pretty telling. <laughs> but talk well, more Dane, about we sell these glasses. We sell these glasses in our store, uh, which I don't know if you can see, but they have a hidden camera in the bridge, uh, and you just you just turn them on here and uh, hit this little button here, and they start recording full motion video uh, up to five hours. They've got a rechargeable battery. They connect to your computer via USB, so you actually can uh, record everything uh, you see through your through your eyes, and it is shocking sometimes. Uh, and these are actually really cool too, because you can go places with these that you <laughs> Uh, it can't traditionally take a camera. So I was walking around a casino with these recently, and you can't usually take a camera into a casino. But I mean, these just look like glasses. So who's going to say anything? Right. Uh, anyway, uh, what was oh, I going to wow. say? Oh, oh, the bottle cap tripod. That guy uh, tripod. we sell tripod. in the. Yeah, we sell that guy in the store. Um, so it's one. It's been one of our most popular products. It still is, and uh, you know we thought, why not? figure out how to make that thing and show people how to do it. So there's actually a couple uh, projects in the, in, the, uh, in the book that are just things that we've sold historically in the store. They've been super popular. People really like them. And so we figured out how to show you, you know, how to make them yourself just from some parts at the hardware store because that's what we're all about. Like you said, we're about helping you uh, make stuff and have fun and 
you know, if, if you'd rather make that DIY tripod, more power to you. That's great. Well, you know, um, you mentioned, uh, well, let me say this actually for the folks who are watching. If you guys have any questions for Amit, what you need to do is click on the little question mark uh, in your screen. And uh, if, you're, if you're a spectator, I don't think you have the question mark. Actually, I take it back. There's actually a big red button in the upper right that says ask a question. And you have to go through all the steps and hit done. And when you've done that, the question will pop up and we'll be able to review them and ask them. Um, so uh, go ahead and do that. But I also want to ask you about one more project you had in here, which I've seen a lot of talk on online, where people talk about time capsules. And could you mm -hmm. explain a little bit about how the time capsule works? And then I have some other questions to follow up after that. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm not sure which version of the time capsule is in the book. I think it's uh, possibly one where you take a. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, okay, is that the that's a disposable camera time capsule? I think. Um, so this is super easy, right? You take yes, a disposable camera. Uh, you take a bunch of photos with it, and um, maybe just take a day in your life or chronicle just some interesting stuff that's going on this week, and then you hide that sucker. You just put it away somewhere where you're not going to pay attention to it for. Uh, a few months or a, actually probably longer maybe a, a year or a few years and maybe set a reminder in your telephone or your you know calendar or Google calendar or whatever to tell yourself to go find it later um, and when you find it develop that thing and you're gonna find this little time capsule of your life that uh, is very surprising uh, doing stuff that you could not have imagined you were doing because our memories are really short and we just don't remember stuff um, and man it's really cheap I mean it, Disposal cameras is like ten bucks, and development's not that expensive, and it's going to be this little fun keepsake. Um, so yeah, that's a fun project. We actually have another uh, time capsule uh, for any of you guys that are on Flickr. Uh, we have a free tool on our website called the Time Capsule, where um, you can plug it into your Flickr account, and then like every two weeks, it sends you the most interesting photos from your Flickr stream from a year ago. And uh, people love it. It's just a really cool way to get reminded of what your life has been like over the past year. Because, uh, like I said, you, we are all taking so many photos, and um, it's very easy to lose track of what we've been doing and, and just those photos we're taking. So it's it's a fun way to stay reminded. You know, we have a couple questions from uh, the folks watching about some of your products, too, in particular. One is, um, and this is just an easy one, but uh, where can I get one of those camera glasses? <laughs> can you, cause in particular, just let us know where that is, because that would be helpful. Yeah, sure. That's it. Uh, photojojo.com slash store, which I just put in the chat. Um, I think it's sold out currently, but if you, uh, if you buy it, I believe we're getting more in a week, so you'll be the first to get one. Uh, but they've been really popular. Cool. And then um, I'm trying to negotiate a lot of things here. Let me see. And then another product I just saw for the first time today was your cloak camera. And um, mm -hmm. let me see. And in particular, and then uh, Scott Apple asked the question: uh, Is the cloak camera bag waterproof? So maybe you could describe it first, and then after it's described, yeah, sure. uh, uh, give us a sense of you kind know, of what are the benefits and all that sort of thing. Yeah, sure. So uh, the cloak camera bag is uh, almost misnamed because it's not really a camera bag. It's more, uh, well, I guess let me describe what it is. It's a, um, it's as if it were a traditional camera bag, but the top and the bottom were open. And the reason you want the top and the bottom to be open is that you can't, it's, it's done in such a way that you can't see the camera when you've got it slung around your shoulder or on your waist. Um, but if you're doing some street photography or you're you know in a new city you're just walking around you want to get some shots um, you can just lift your case to your face and take a photo right away it's got slits in the side so you can get your hands on on your camera the bottom uh, has a zipper so you can keep it open the top has a uh, way to keep it open um, so basically you just lift the camera case up take a picture and bring it back down and unlike a traditional camera case where you have to undo some buckles or zippers and kind of like get the camera out, fumble with it, get the strap on, uh, it's already ready to go. So that's the main benefit of the cloak camera case. It's a great uh, walking around case. If you've got, uh, you know, an 18 to 55 or 18 to whatever uh, walking around lens that you use, kind of keep on your camera all the time, this is the equivalent case. It's the case you keep on your camera all the time because you want it ready to go. Uh, as for is it waterproof, <laughs> I have to double check on that. Uh, I think the fabric itself might be, but I don't think it's built for uh, heavy down uh, pores, so I don't know if the zipper seams are waterproof, but I can check on that. And if uh, if the person who asked Scott is interested, they can 
uh, you can email me at amit at photojojo.com. Cool. Well, uh, we have another question. I'm not sure if it'll get asked in the in the chat room or in the main area, but my friend Tamara Lackey asked the question, is there a relationship between uh, the cameras looking at people's crotches and uh, the cloak bag? And I'm just wondering if you could comment on that really quick. <laughs> the, the cameras looking at people. Uh, I, I don't think there's a relationship, uh, but uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Appropriate, um, no comment. Okay, so here's what I'm wondering, because a lot of folks uh, who are, as I look through this book, I'm really struck by, uh, or at least one of my biases, I talk a lot about how people could, if they could find what they're uniquely made to do, they could build a niche around it and create something pretty phenomenal as a career. And I know that's something I've heard you talk about in other contexts, um, and you've really done this in your own life. I look through this thing and I keep thinking like there's so many people could people could build a career around a lot of these different hobbies like become become the uh, the instant book uh, expert they could become uh, the tin photo album guy they could you know the the photo <laughs> tattooist who knows but yeah um, sure. It, it, when I look at all these possibilities it seems like at the core of all these things is a real commitment to creativity and it seems like, as I look around the pro ranks, um, the transition has often gone from uh, I want to be creative to I got to figure out a way to make a buck. And we talked a little bit about how to keep the fire alive with our photography. Any advice on how to resist the temptation to, to make it all about the cash? Is it, is it just a matter of sticking with these projects or is there some other advice you give? I think the number one piece of advice I can give is don't be like everyone else. Um, that's that's really what it's all about. Like, it, there's two ways to get known in the world, right? You can spend a ton of money on advertising and marketing and and force yourself or your message or your product or your company down people's throats, and that will work if you've got enough cash. Or, like you said, you can find a niche. You can find something that you do more creatively, more interestingly, more in, just better than anyone else in the world can do it. And you can own that niche. And that's the cheap way to market because if you're the only person that does it and you're the only person talking about it, when people need that thing, they're coming to you. Um, and the reason that helps you not worry about the money, um, it's because the you start worrying about money when you need to make money and you need to get the word out and so you, you know, you figure out ways to market, you figure out ways to price, you figure out all these ways to optimize all the variables to make your, your life work. And I don't think the optimization is where creativity necessarily comes. I think it's figuring out the place in this world where you need to be and where nobody else can be. And then it's not so much about making money, it's about doing what you love and making sure that people know about it. And the money will come. Hmm. Now that's very, car uh, I don't know if it's karma-esque or what, but uh, it really it does strike an intuitive sense in my own heart of like that's that makes sense to me. What do you, what do you say to the skeptics? They're like, yeah, that's nice in theory, kumbaya land, but you know that does it really work or is that just a nice little saying? Give it a try. I mean, there's no <laughs> other way I can convince a skeptic than to actually give it a try and see if it works. Um, but I mean, I like you said before, there's there's people who just make photo books. I have a friend in Seattle who makes beautiful photo books and she charges hundreds of dollars making photo books. Um, there's companies online that will make your photo books. They'll, you can upload a photo, you upload a bunch of photos, they'll print them out. It costs like 20 or 30 bucks. She, this woman charges thousands of dollars and what she does is she takes your photos, she takes your stories, she interviews you and she puts together this volume of this period of your life or this event or whatever that's totally personalized and she's just one woman and this is what she does. Um, and it seems kind of crazy. Are people really going to pay thousands of dollars for a photo book? Yes, because she's the best person to make these photo in books in the whole entire world. And that's what she wants to do. So people find her when they want the best possible photo book. Um, I think it works. You know, uh, you know that I have a man crush on Seth Godin, and I, I talk about it regularly, and I'm heter fully heterosexual, but um, I know that you have a friendship with him as well, and it goes back a little bit. How, how much of this stuff is, is purely, well, it seems like he's had an influence on you. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your relationship with him and how, how he has impacted your thinking on this and where even challenged you to take some of your own risks personally in your own business. I, I definitely think he's had a huge impact on me. I think that um, 
probably he's taught me tons and I think I've learned more about marketing on the internet and just marketing in general than I have from anyone else from him and mm. uh, probably the key lessons uh, were learning that marketing isn't a dirty word I think that as someone with an artistic and a computer science training and kind of a photography hobbyist background um, I saw myself as a creative and I didn't see myself as a marketer. I saw marketers as leeches and people who basically just shout, take a bullhorn and try to shout at people to get them to pay attention. And I think that it, it took his tutelage to turn me around and start thinking about marketing when done right as a way to provide solutions. It's more about um, creating something wonderful and then telling people about it. So. That's to me what marketing is, and the reason that that's what marketing is to me is because Seth taught me that marketing is about creating something that's really good, something that people actually want to talk about and think is remarkable, think is worth telling their friends about, and if you create that thing, it's your responsibility to make sure that people find out about it because it actually is great and it's going to make people's lives better. Sounds like a, a, a uh, stewardship issue, like I've been given a gift, I've got to do something with it. Is that what you're saying? I think so. I think that I hope so. I think that uh, I think if you're not creating something that you think is the the best possible thing of whatever it is you're creating, then you're wasting your time. And you wow. you really should focus and find the thing that you can do really really well, and that you can get behind 100 percent. That you're not embarrassed to bring up at cocktail parties or bring up when you're hanging out with your friends because you truly 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 believe in it. And if you make that thing, then marketing is easy and marketing is natural. It's just talking to people and telling people about what you're doing. Well, that, that's actually a perfect segue. We're almost out of time, but uh, my friend Tamara asked the question, what are you most excited about in terms of working on next? What, what project are you up against that sounds exciting? Um, I think the build is probably the most exciting thing we're working on now. We've, uh, we've been a, a lean organization. We have um, I think five or six people, but only two of them are full time, and only two of them are full time here in San Francisco, and others are kind of spread out doing things from LA or from uh, Philadelphia or from Connecticut. My mom works on uh, inventory management for the store from Connecticut, um, and we're starting to to take on more people uh, in San Francisco. We're hiring a marketing person right now, which is the the first marketing person we've ever hired. Um, so building that team, but like working to keep. Uh, the voice right and keep the the spirit of fun and photography alive and consistent I think is going to be a really interesting challenge and something that I'm looking forward to doing this year right on let me do this um, I, I want to be honoring of your time it's super fantastic I, I just I think you're a fantastic guy on it and uh, you've been Thanks. great friends to me for a long time and uh, I'm going to be up in San Francisco uh, in a couple of weeks, and then later on in September, I hope we get a chance to get some more coffee. But thank you for all that you're doing for our industry. It, it is inspiring. Um, it feels very um, pure, and uh, I hope that you make a billion dollars at it because uh, it really is something that. <laughs> I hope I make a lot of people happy. <laughs> well, if you make a lot of people happy, I think you'll do just great. But the the bigger picture is, uh, I just wish success on you because we need more of you in our in our industry, especially around collaboration and risk taking, and uh, and real creativity. So thanks so much for being on the show, and I'm probably going to ask you to be on again someday. But uh, on behalf of everybody here, uh, thank you. And for those of you who are watching, uh, be sure to be uh, following uh, at SuperAmit S U P E R A M I T, and also at Photo JoJo. Uh, for regular updates and I would really encourage you right now uh, don't wait run and go get photojojo.com uh, insanely great I can't write and look at the same uh, photo projects and DIY IDs and, and the quick link to that is j.mp forward slash Amit is cool so uh, that's it for this week thanks so much Amit and we'll see you guys next time thanks Shane bye see you